where we take culture, TVs, and movies, and we filter it right. This time, I'm going to talk about Candace Owens and what she did on Capitol Hill today. She went before a committee to deal with white nationalism, racism, reparations, hate crimes, and all this. And she just had these people, Democrats, I mean, squirming in their seats. They were looking at their watches like, come on, man, this is over yet? Come on, come on, come on, go faster. I mean, they really were like, dude, this, this is horrible. Because you can see their facial reactions and all their stuff. And it was, it was fun to watch. And Candace didn't hold anything back. She gave them both barrels and was merciless on these people. So essentially what she did was she framed the argument initially by saying, you know what? I was once a Democrat. I voted for Democrats. My grandfather was a sharecropper who was attacked by the Ku Klux Klan. He was, he was oppressed by them, terrorized by them. This group of Democrat were shooting holes in his house, harassing him. Him and his father, her great-grandfather. So she framed the argument there. She said, even I was involved in a hate crime because you may be wondering why I'm even here. But I was once involved in a hate crime, but it doesn't matter because I'm black and I don't fit the narrative of what you guys are looking for. Boom! <laughs> so right there, that was within the first you know, 25, 35 seconds. So already they're like, okay, this is not going to be something that we're going to want to sit through. Oh, no, you're not going to want to sit through this. She gets into them even further. She goes into the fact of how the black community is being victimized by Democrats, how the Democrats are basically using reparations, white nationalism as buzzwords to politicize the 2020 election because essentially they don't have any other thing to run on. They're upset by the 2016 election and they have to figure out a way to get black people back on the plow to vote for Democrats. She knows that with this Brexit and walk away movement going on, that is whittling away from their base of the black community. And it doesn't take much for people to come off that to make a huge impact in the election. If you look at Pennsylvania, if you look at uh, Michigan and Detroit, Philadelphia, respectively, you'll see how the black turnout was so low that it basically allowed Michigan and Pennsylvania to go red because nobody was voting for Hillary Clinton. And I think with Trump coming in now, it's going to be really more difficult for them to, to keep that narrative going. So they're going to have to move the goalposts, expand the voter base, lower the, the voting age to 16, um, allow illegals to come into the country and vote. Oh, why not? Why not just have prisoners, people who are in prison physically right now, vote as well? Okay. So they're trying to move the goalposts because they don't have enough voters to basically fall for their crap anymore, essentially. And so she goes on, essentially, and she says, look, you know, I want to talk about real issues. Why can't we talk about real issues in the black community? In my opinion, it's because they don't want to. It's all about power, money, and being able to keep that particular influence and that stranglehold on a group of people to get them to do what they want them to do every four years. It's as simple as that. She cut right to the chase. She didn't hold any been anything back. She said it very articulately. And she even mentioned her, her grandfather behind her and saying, hey, you know what? Racism is not worse today than it was back then. It's an insult to him and his generation and the generations before them to even mention that. And she's right. How dare this generation say, oh my gosh, we're so oppressed, when there was actual real lynching and poll taxes and segregation and abuse and all that going on in the Jim Crow era. And yet, and yet despite that, despite that, the black community still was doing better financially than we are today. Why? Because the nuclear family in the 1960s and 50s was more sound than it is today, way more sound. I think she she quoted some statistics. She some statistics. She went on a a whirlwind of of stats where she rattled some things off, right? But the one thing she rattled off was the single mother was families was seventy four percent today, where it was twenty three percent back in the um, Jim Crow era. I'll leave the video down below. My numbers may be a little bit off. I'm just I just watched it one time, but this was an awesome an awesome hearing for her. 
And I think, you know, I think these are the types of things that have to be said that are not going to be said by anybody. Well, will be said by other people, but because they may be of a different class of people, maybe a white male or a white female or somebody else, they're going to brush them off because, yeah, well, they're saying that because they're they're this or they're that. They're not they don't they're not really, really down. Well, I'm sorry. Candace Owens is about as down as you're going to get. Two years ago, she was a Democrat. She's a black female and worked her way up with no money, being in debt and working her way up and being in a prominent position in America right now. And she's done that by the bootstraps. And, you know, it's just it's just an empowering thing. And I really, really appreciate her doing that. And so I just want to do a quick video on that because I just think that's so impressive of her and, of uh, you know, Turning Point USA. They're doing a wonderful job. And so to that, I'm going to talk about more just tonight. I'm going to do my show tonight. I'm going to primarily trigger around this particular topic, but I have other things to talk about too. There's so much going on right now. But yeah, so you're not going to play that identity politics game on people like Candace Owens. And I believe the average American isn't buying it either. If you look at across the board with this channel, we talk about TV, culture, and movies and how that all is being affected. And so, you know, that's what this is all about, guys. This is all about getting the message out and like letting people have a form to dispel these myths and narratives that are just totally off base and are only there for one reason to gain power, all right? So with that, I hope everybody's having a great day. If you like the content on this channel where we take culture, TV, and movies, and we filter it right, then please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. And also, please check out the videos I have right here.